So welcome everyone. Um, I have a few words to say, but I will be the last um, as the least important of, uh, I was going to say the table, but I don't know if this counts as a table. <laughs> but, um, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you all um, to this third conference, um, and especially to welcome both uh, Enrique Garcia, President and CEO of um, CAF, I'm very much responsible uh, of this agreement that, that um, the fact that we are here, and Roger Goodman, Head of Social Science in the University of Oxford, an upcoming warden here in St. Anthony's, um, and someone that has always supported from the social science this type of agreement and interaction. So if I can give first the uh, floor to you, Enrique. Okay, um, well, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, Diego. Great pleasure to be here, and welcome. It's uh, indeed uh, great to be here back in Oxford. It's a rainy day, but <laughs> nothing is perfect, you know. And this, uh, so I, I, I think this, uh, this is a special occasion because this is the third uh, conference that we have since in uh, about six years ago, five years ago, in 2011. We signed an agreement uh, between CAF, Development Bank of Latin America, and, and Oxford uh, to, to work together in different issues, uh, trying to interchange uh, students, uh, to have seminars both here and in the region. And let me tell you, I'm so happy that after these years we, we have been very successful in doing so. Not only this is the third uh, conference uh, on topics that are quite relevant for development, but also we have had seminars in many of the countries in the cities in Bogota, in Brasilia, in Lima, in other places. Also, we have exchange of students, and I, I, th I think this is a very, very important element for the future of the region because it's, uh, it's great to have a, a strong connection with the universities. In fact, we have a network of universities around the world with which we, we work and we have conferences <coughs> all over uh, to try precisely to, to discuss uh, public policy and to try to have influence, positive influence in the region. Uh, the topic that we are going to discuss today is a very crucial one, informality. And I know we have a very good program, very good speakers, a lot of experience, and I'm sure that we are going to have a very, very intensive discussion and very positive in terms of results. But uh, let me briefly say a few things. Uh, the issue of informality uh, is a clear one in, in terms of we have seen Latin America having good days and bad days, especially the last uh, 15 years, with the exception of what has happened in the last two years. Most of the time, the region has had a very positive performance in terms of growth, in terms of reduction of poverty, and many other things. But one issue is that informality has not changed. <coughs> Why is that? It's precisely something that the experts will let us know. But I will try to put this, this theme in a broader context. And let me make some reflections on that. It has to do a lot, first of all, with the type of development model that we have in Latin America. Uh, unfortunately, we are too tied up to commodities. And what we have in the region, essentially, especially in South America, is a traditional model of comparative advantage. And notwithstanding the fact that we always have said it's time to change, temptation comes when the prices of commodities are high. And of course, we believe we are very rich. And the consequence of that is that we do not take advantage of the platform that we have in a given path. Now, as you have seen in the last two years, the cycle has changed. And in fact, Latin America uh, shows, as a region, uh, negative growth. I should qualify this, however, because if you exclude two economies, you exclude Brazil, a little country, and in Venezuela, of course, the situation is not negative, but what is true is the rate of growth in the, the other countries has been below 3% or something like that. 
that's not acceptable. Uh, and because we have a very clear uh, projection for the future, we made a study on Latin America 2050. And the main conclusion that we got in that study is that if Latin America wants to converge with the industrialized countries in terms of income per capita, income per capita in the next 25, 30 years, and at the same time be able to keep the success story in terms of reduction of poverty and giving opportunities to the new middle classes, you cannot be satisfied with rates of growth of 3, 2, or 3 percent. You need to grow at at least at 5, 6 percent on a stable and continuous way. And not only that, you have to have a different type of growth, better quality growth, which implies that precisely what I was saying before, you have to move from a traditional comparative advantage model to a dynamic comparative advantage model, in essence, competitive advantage, which is based in technology, in innovation, in productive sectors that go beyond the traditional things. Well, to say that is very easy. To do that requires a lot, a lot of action uh, from the governments, from the private sector, from labor and everybody. And here we insert the issue of informality. I think that a way to move in the right direction is precisely if you move into that mode, which implies very clearly that you will have to do many things. And put emphasis on issues that I'm sure during this day will be discussed. One, of course, is the type of education education of the 21st century, not of the 19th century exclusively. We are here, in the, so economists, political scientists, lawyers, all of us. But well, that's good, excellence. But we, what we need also is intermediate things. We need skills. Skills is a very important thing. And skills is something that you develop in life. It starts when you are born, in your family, in the environment in which you live. Skills continue where? Continue in education, in the formal education. Skills building continues in the workplace. And what you have to have is the environment. So that's one issue that requires coordination of all the actors, governments, private sector, educational centers, and society. So that's one of the elements that we have. Then, of course, why is that people remain in informality? Many reasons. One is, of course, they don't have the skills for the, these new things. And secondly, there are regulations in a series of elements that I'm sure are going to be discussed that prevent those who could move from informality to formality to do so because they make a very simple cost-benefit analysis. In the cost-benefit analysis, maybe the taxing system and other things are an obstacle for what they do. So that's something that I'm sure during this day we'll, we'll discuss. But I just wanted to put the, the thing in the, in the broader context. Latin America has to do a very important change to build up long-term agenda of development because some of the issues they require to establish a path of growth that will be higher, stable, efficient, inclusive, and environmentally sustainable require, require long-term agendas in which you have to have a compromise between the different players, the governments, the opposition parties, parliaments, and of course, private sector, labor, society. Infrastructure, education, institutions, are issues that are not solved in one year or two years, are not solved in an electoral period of four or five years. They require 15, 20 years. It was easy to do those changes in societies like, you know, in Korea or in Singapore because they don't have the same democratic system as we have in Latin America. And you have changes every four years. And everybody wants to have results in four years. It's easier to show the, the breach than to have a substantial change in skills, in education, in technology, in innovation. So simply I wanted to, to introduce this theme in 
to conclude, I would say that for CAF, it's a very, very important to have this type of, of discussions because we strongly believe in a comprehensive agenda of development which has economic, social, and political implications because to do this, you require to make substantial changes in the way political parties, politicians, and government oppositions work in building up a future of the region. So I'm very pleased again and I'm very happy to, to work together with this great university and I'm sure that we'll continue having very good programs. So enjoy the day and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So let me also give now the floor to Roger. I re realize that in addition to Head of Social Science, upcoming Warden, he's very much professor here in the Nissan Center. So in fact, um, he's working on us in a different way, which is we are in your building. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And let me start by apologizing for the weather. It was, beauti it, it was beautiful yesterday. So I don't know which of you offended the gods overnight, but uh, let's hope it gets better. No, it's not. Uh, but people from Cambridge doing that. Well, that probably explains it. It normally does. Um, let me start, as Diego said, welcome you to the Nissan uh, Institute of Japanese Studies. That's the same Nissan, by the way, which is now the government's best friend. It's the only company that so far has signed up post-Brexit for investing in the, uh, in the UK. Uh, as Diego said, um, I would like to welcome you under a number of different hats, uh, under the hat of the incoming warden of St. Anthony's College, uh, as the former head of the School of Interdisciplinary Area Studies and actually now as the head of the Social Sciences uh, Division. And that's because this project, this, this, this conference, actually ticks perfectly all the boxes about which all of those uh, institutions are most concerned. So St. Anthony's, as most of you know, is the most international of Oxford's colleges. It has almost 500 students, graduate students, all social scientists, all studying different regions of the world. And they come from, I think at the minute, 71 different countries uh, of the world. The School of Interdisciplinary Area Studies, as the name suggests, is the home of Oxford's uh, research that looks at the different areas of the world through an interdisciplinary perspective. But what's unusual about that school is that almost all the appointments are joint appointments between the area studies, Latin American or Japan or China, and the discipline department. So our area studies in Oxford are completely integrated uh, into the wider university. And the social sciences division prides itself on dealing with real world problems. And of course, what you're doing in this conference is dealing with real world problems, the growth of the informal uh, economy. And I think there are four reasons why I'm really impressed by what you're, you're setting out to do. The first is you're doing something which is totally interdisciplinary. As you said just now, this isn't just about economists, this is about political scientists, it's about sociologists, but it's also about anthropologists and psychologists because informal economies and the changes in the informal economy change the way that people look at the world. Uh, and it's comparative, I guess it's implicitly comparative. I, I mean, I'm a specialist, as, as I just said, on, on Japan, and I work on youth culture uh, in Japan, and Japan is a country where the informal economy has changed out of all recognition since the 1990s. Japan had a very stable economy, the labour market was absolutely clear where you went through school, into what types of jobs and so on. That has more or less disappeared um, overnight. And it doesn't just change the way that people look at the world, it changes the way they look at themselves. It's actually changed the language, the words that people use. There's a whole new vocabulary and lexicon that has entered the Japanese language in the last 20 years as a result of these changes in the economy. And I'm absolutely sure that will be the same in Latin America as well. It changes the dreams and the nightmares uh, of young people as they think about who they are and, and what life is going to be like uh, in the future. It's a topical issue. It's a global phenomenon. I'm pretty sure that the changes in the informal economy explain what's happened with Brexit. It's one of the reasons. It explains what's happening in the US with the, the elections next Tuesday. We're all holding our breath to find out what's going to happen next Tuesday. But these things are interlinked. These are actually, you can't separate your economic from your political uh, structures. And I'm sure that by studying this topic, you'll have a lot of interesting insights about what's going on uh, in Latin America. And finally, the reason that I really welcome this event is it's collaborative. And this is something that we try so hard to do in Oxford. And if I can say, Enrique, the CAF 
Latin American Center model of working together has become almost the model for how to do this perfectly. It's worked brilliantly. I think it's the third of five, am I right? And I know there are two more to come, but we use this model elsewhere to think about joint working and collaborative uh, working. And can I finally thank you personally very much for your investment? I know that at the end of this year you're stepping down after, I was told 25 years. I can't quite. Too long, huh? Well, it seems <laughs> unbelievable, 25 years. I just want to finally say, I hope this means we're going to see more of you here yes. in the future. Oh, I hope so. But let me make a clarification. When they say this person has been 25 years, Reelected four times, yes, I said, but I didn't change the constitution. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that's a very important thing. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. That's really, really appreciative. So can I just wish everybody all the best for what I know will be a fabulous event and just to say thank you to all those people who I know have put huge amounts behind organizing. These things don't happen easily and a lot of people need to be thanked. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, I had a whole set of paragraphs about what the conference was about, but um, both Enrique and Roger <laughs> did much better on, on explaining. I only um, would add that there's a whole social policy and tax dimension as well um, on the impact of informality and what's happening in the region that we, we will touch, and we will touch um, very much partly um, because of who is the organizer, which I will say in a second. Um, but before that, um, in truth, we could say all we wanted about the importance of the agreement, uh, the importance of collaboration, etc. But at the end, um, this is very much the result of um, an idea and a push um, brought forward and, um, um, and thought even by one person, Enrique Garcia, who is stepping down. So I know I had not prepared this. I know he will not like it. But in a way, this is a conference um, in his honor before he steps down and is very much um, thinking about the implications that all um, his work, both in terms of the economics. <laughs> but also in terms of pushing for these collaborations. As Enrique was saying, this isn't just one of a few uh, of a network in Latin America, which um, Enrique with um, Guillermo Fernandez, who I'm very sad that um, is not here um, with us, um, have very much pushed. So um, I want to thank you, but also to say we are going to be very, several times today, um, reminding you of your 25 years. I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, the second thing I wanted to say, of course, is um, the several thank yous. Um, Roger Goodman um, said very much how important um, the work of many people is in organizing the conference. Um, this is actually um, not um, a conference I have organized for the first of the, of the three, but um, it's very much the product of um, David Doyle, um, who thought about the idea of um, thinking about informality, linking it with much of um, the work he's doing now. Uh, which then invited um, the people. And for me, the one I'm more thinking about, uh, then struggle with all the last minute things. So for once, I had to look from outside uh, how someone else had to struggle with all those things. So thank you very much, um, David, both for the intellectual, but also for the uh, organizational elements. Um, so while David is new in the organization, there's many, several other people that are actually very much at the heart of um, this project. I know I don't mean just this conference, but very much everything else we have done with CAF. Um, with, um, in CAF, it's Manuela <coughs> Ore, who um, struggled from Madrid uh, to make everything uh, together, gets upset with us, but always in a very polite way, very weird for a Spaniard to be very polite and be upset, <laughs> never shouts, etc. Not uh, how Spaniards tend to be. Sorry, I'm one, so I'm not. Um, Germán Rios, who is very much uh, at the center of how we did this, and Andres Rujeles uh, in Colombia um, very much taking the phone and uh, again telling us in a very polite way what to do and what not to do. And of course Guillermo Fernandez, who I hope is um, uh, in bed or is sitting down but seeing us um, in the web uh, and thank goodness that we uh, issued. Um, and then in Oxford, um, our very uh, great team of administrators uh, Anania, who is not here today, but um, did much of the work. Elvira Ryan, who um, has actually been at the Latin American Center more than Enrique uh, in CAF, uh, and is very much uh, the memory of, uh, for all of us. Stephen um, and I, who stepped down at the last minute to do 
all the work, uh, Marijen Jimenez, and all the nine students that are there helping us. So I want to um, thank and all. Um, at the end, um, for us, this, and for the Latin American Center, this is one of the highlights of um, every two years, both the ones we organize here and the ones we organize in Latin America, for many, many reasons. The fact that we can think about um, difficult and important topics like informality, the fact that we get to invite uh, very significant uh, people from the region, but more importantly, as Roger was saying, the fact that we can establish a collaboration both um, with the university, with St. Anthony's, and with CAF, that we hope um, we can do with other partners and that we hope we can extend in the future. So welcome, everyone. Um, get ready for a very interesting day, and get ready again um, to celebrate um, the fact that Enrique Garcia had You're a very nice day. I am <laughs> celebrating the, the last 25, but also, hopefully, the many times you will come back yes. to Oxford yes. in the next 25. Okay. Thank you very much. Celebrating your freedom. <laughs>